All right, this is Ian, and this is the third time I've tried to record this now. I've been down here for like 40 minutes trying to get this to work. I am out of Mountain Dew Code Red. I am not having a decent time, but here we are in semifinals of Hive Beedrill. We defeated Recon Jack last week, and we are facing... This week, Nader slash not a please and his Memphis Guzzlords. He did end up defeating Nice, <laughs> Nice Ice, who was the number one seed, in very like convincing fashion. Like it wasn't by, by far a blowout by any means, but he handled him very well. Hazard stacked him, and handled his threats very well. So that did leave me a bit concerned going into this matchup, and it is also a rematch and. I hate rematches. They almost always favor the person that lost the first time. As they know what works against their team. And are going to like be bringing a te team that's much different. And usually in playoffs the team is different than when you fought them the first time. However, this is a little bit different. And there was a bit of a story behind this matchup. The the first time we fought was in week 8, I believe. So we fought, like, not that long ago. But that match mattered in terms of playoff positioning, because if I won, I think I guaranteed my spot in playoffs. And it put him in a very rocky start to playoffs. Like, because he fought Ice last week, who was number 1 seed, he was the number 8 seed in playoffs, so he just barely made it in. And that's why that match was so important. So we both built, I believe, our best teams for that matchup. So, since it was week 8, transaction periods were over. So, it's the same team. We both do have the same teams as our first matchup. Therefore, it's hard for me to think of really many ways I can... Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry. Think of many ways to change up this team. So, um, because I probably won't, because, um, because I'm not sure if I ended up showing it in the Hive recap video, which, if it's not up by the time this video goes up, again, know that we made playoffs, as I said in my Recon Jack video, and I will have a Hive recap video, hopefully, before finals. And... This match, um, to continue the story I was telling earlier, <laughs> um, into that week eight match, um, my friend TC, um, TCMTL, and I have been building with each other throughout the entire season. Like, on a weekly basis, we come to each other, like, discuss the matchup, and all that stuff. He was in Beedrill too, and he fought Nader. And he has a lot. And he had a Latios on his team. Um, he ended up six owing Nader with a Calm Mind Roost um, dual stab Latios. And when we fought the first time, he prepped hard for the Latios. Like he brought ice coverage on the side. <laughs> he brought like. Ice coverage, and he brought, like, knockoff plus ice coverage on Seismitoad. He brought two things to hit it hit it with. He brought a max attack, max bedef, um, a Sol vest, a Lullin muck. I'm pretty sure he carried dark pulse slash knockoff on his thunderous, though I'm not certain. It was a Z-move thunderous last time, so he's definitely bringing nasty plot dark pulse. Because against TC, he brought choice scarfed. Because TC had a talon flame, which was also very threatening to his team. And he thought about checking that more than he cared about checking Latios. Against my team, the biggest threat to him is Zygarde. So I'm kind of, I kind of almost am expecting him to bring a Choice Scarf Thunderous. Because last time, I didn't bring Latio, Latios. Um, I didn't bring the other Lottie. And he just kind of lost to Banded Zygarde. So, this time I'm playing a bit of mind games. I am actually bringing the exact same team. I changed one move on my Celesteela. 
Other than that, the, the team I'm bringing against Nader is the same exact team that I brought against him last time. That is for two reasons, and yes, it is on purpose. I did prep against Nader. Like, I spent a lot of time thinking about this matchup, prepping for this matchup, and ultimately I decided that the same team worked the best. Because one, I legitimately think this is the best team I can bring against Nader. Since his team is the exact same, I still feel like I brought the best team I could against him the first time. I'm just going to bring that team again. Because I still think it's the best way I can handle all of his threats. And B, I'm kind of hoping he overpressed for Latias, Latias a second time. I am hoping he thinks, since I didn't bring Latias that last time, he's going to bring um, Avia, Lola, and Muck. Like, he needs to bring Avia, Lola, and Muck or Latias will run through him. He's going to bring a non-Choice Scarf Thunderous, because if he, he's a non-Choice Scarf Thunderous, he does not revenge kill Zygarde with anything that's not Mega Alakazam. Because, I mean, look at his team. The speed tiers go from Mega Alakazam all the way down to freaking Thunderous. That is a 39 speed tier gap that Zygarde is nestled very nicely in between. And he has no switch-ins to Thousand Arrows. His switch-in is Virizion and a max HP, max defense Florges. Um, So... Other than that, everything either gets to a KO'd or just drops, especially if rocks are up. So, um, we'll actually go into discussing his team. Um, Thunderous, definitely expecting Thunderous. I'm not sure if it's going to be Choice Scarfed. I'm kind of hoping it's not, because if he's not Choice Scarfed, I'm not as scared of a setup Thunderous. I'm really not. I am not as scared of a setup Thunderous. So, um... I'm I'm legitimately kind of hoping he's Choice Scarf because if he is a setup Thunderous, then he is going to lose a because if he is a setup Thunderous, he is going to lose a Pokemon to Choice Bandit Thousand Arrows when it comes in. When the dog comes in, he is clean losing a Pokemon to Choice Bandit Thousand Arrows. Um, Florges, definitely expecting Florges to come. It is 100% sent, has to come in my mind, or he will lose a Pokemon to Zygarde every time it comes in. Even with Rocks up, he has to protect on me, otherwise he's losing a Pokemon to Zygarde. Skarmory, um, I'm moving down to Skarmory because I feel like this is another Pokemon that has to come, and I am fully expecting counter Skarmory. Either Leftovers or Shook a Skarm. Like, because last time what happened is Skarmory came in, got smacked down, and then proceeded to die. So, if he's left over Skarmory, he's not going to bring it in hard on Zygarde. He's going to bring it in after, and I think, oh, I can get a free KO on, I can get a free KO on Skarmory. This thing's annoying. I don't have to deal with it anymore. And then I lose my Scar, then I lose my Zygarde. He clicks counter and doesn't take the super effective damage from Thousand Arrows the first time because he's not smacked down yet. Um, if he's bringing, if he's bringing Shookaberry, then he can bring it in hard on Zygarde and fake the fact that he's going to get to a KO upon switching. Because with Thousand Arrows, with Thousand Arrows, he will, he will get to a KO'd. Because the first one will do neutral damage, and then the second one will do super effective damage because he is smacked down. But, this time he will die. That time he won't die if he has a Shookaberry, so he can catch me off guard with the counter. Um, <coughs> other than that, oh, and also Mega Alakazam. Mega Alakazam has to come. He didn't bring it last time. I beat everything with a banded Zygarde. He needs to bring Mega Alakazam. Like, if he doesn't, he loses a Pokemon. <laughs> like, he loses a Pokemon and may just lose every other Pokemon after that. So, yeah. <laughs> and even with Mega Alakazam, Banned Zygarde is a huge threat. Especially if I can just log myself into Extreme Speed. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm definitely expecting those. Alolan Muck has to come. Like, Alolan Muck has to come, otherwise he will lose to Latias. 
like I said, I'm bringing the same team, so I'm not bringing Latias again. But if he doesn't bring Alolan Muck, he doesn't know that I'm not bringing Latias. And he needs to bring a Soul of Us Alolan Muck, otherwise he's going to lose. Um, so I'm expecting... I'm, what I'm expecting... Thunderous, Florges, like, you see the matchup. I'm not going to list off every single Pokemon and, and say what they do. do. But Thunderous, Florges, Alolan Muck, Megazam, Skarmory. Those are five Pokemon I'm expecting to come come. What I'm not expecting to come, Quillfish. I'm not expecting Quillfish to come. It doesn't really do anything against Lottie. It's another thing that Bandit Zygarde just kind of picks off. He doesn't really do much to Mega Ka Kang, because uh, it gets Earthquake. Like, yeah, it could be like a Rocky Helmet. Oh, I'm going to take chip damage, but my moves are Earthquake. But L Mega Lottie gets Earthquake, and that's the best thing to hit Quillfish with anyway, and I won't take Recoil from Rocky Helmet, so... Uh... Yeah, I'm not expecting Quillfish. I'm kind of iffy on Seismitoad because he didn't br because he did bring it last time. And even though it is a it is one of the very very few things on his team that doesn't get to a KO'd by Zygarde upon switching, it is it just gives my Rotom Mo a free switch in every single time. And spoilers, I am bringing Rotom Mo, and I brought it last time, and he knows that I brought Rotom Mo last time. He can't 2 a KO Rotom Mo. He can't even 3 a KO Rotom Mo upon switching. Unless he's running, like, offensive. So, yeah. Um, Golurk, I can see it. Like, I can see him bringing, like, a bulky set. Take rocks off a of Skarm. Get a... Take rocks off a of Skarm to put spikes on it. And, like, he hits me pretty hard with his coverage. Like... Could run like Earthquake Shadow Punch, and that kind of hits everything super hard. It may not beat Celesteela, but Celesteela can't really do too much damage to it, and it can just chip me down. Um, so I could see Golurk. Um, I could see Darmanitan, but he didn't bring it last time. So Def, but he did bring it last time, and it just did nothing because I have a Pre-Marina. So, yeah. Haxorus, I definitely think, is going to be the sixth Mon, though. Like, if I had to pick one of these Pokemon, I would say Haxorus. Because Dragon Dance Haxorus is a very big threat. <laughs> then again, I have been known to bring Scarf Latios quite a couple times. But he has an Alolan Muck, so he'll probably he probably knows that Scarf Latios is not going to do anything. So, yeah. That's the, that's the team analysis. Let's get into the actual team. Oh. oh, excellent way to come back. Okay. So, here's the team that I brought. Actually, um, let me just set it up like this, yeah. So, as you can see, we are bringing Mega Kangaskhan. Um, enough HP and Special Defense, so I can live a Modest Focus Blast... For, modest Focus Blast... Can't speak. From Mega Alakazam, I can live a... Focus Blast from a Life Orb Thunderous and a Gigavolt Havoc from a Thunderous. Basically, any Z move that's not um, all out pummeling from Thunderous. Um, the attack is to pretty much to a KO everything on his team. Um, I am running Hasty because this is not really going to be a check to any of its physical threats. Like, it's not going to check Verizion and it's not going to check Haxorus. Oh, I didn't really talk about Verizion. And uh, now that I, like, think about it, like, he he has a thing for bringing Verizion. <laughs> like, he brought it against TC when I didn't think it was that good of a Pokemon. And he, he might bring it against me just because I have a Tyranitar. Like... Verizion could be an issue, but I don't really think it's that big of one. So, yeah. Uh, Mega Kangaskhan. Fake out Sucker Punch uh, for faster threats like Thunderous. Verizion. Fake out can at least hit that thing for some very good damage. And for Mega Alakazam. Uh, fake out Sucker Punch kills Thunderous after rocks and kills... Um, that's why I have this very specific investment... And kills uh, Mega Alakazam 
without rocks, obviously. It's Mega Alakazam. Even if he's running max HP, fake out into Sucker Punch is killing. So, um, unfortunately with these investments, I could only run 160 Timid, which, um, the Hasty, actually, which does not allow me to, um, outspeed Darmanitan or Haxorus, but it does allow me to outspeed Quillfish and adamant varieties of either of those Pokemon, which I can see him bringing, because he might just run enough speed to outspeed Nidoqueen, and I am running enough speed to outspeed him speed creeping that. I am running enough speed to outspeed, um, those mons. So, yeah. Yeah, enough speed to outspeed Quillfish. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Next up... Oh, and Thunderbolts for Skarmory. So, next up, Bandit Zygarde. Bring it again. Um, no switch-ins. His switch-ins his switch are Seismitoad, which gets 3 KO'd. Verizion, which gets 3 KO'd. <laughs> and if there's ever a time I click Outrage, he just... If he doesn't bring Florges, which is why I think he needs to bring Florges, he just straight up loses the Pokemon. And, well, if Skarmory goes down, he straight up loses the Pokemon. Um, if Skarmory slash Thunderous go down, Earthquake is spammable, does a little bit more damage to Thousand Arrows, and it's that little extra bit more that, like, if Rocks are up, Seismitoad has a chance to get to a KO'd at that point. Especially if he brings Rocky Helmet, like he brought last time. Um, Street Speed Priority picks off picks off um, an Agility up Thunderous, a Dragon Dance up um, Haxorus, and Mega Alakazam, and Outrage for Dragon Stab, enough Speed for Thunderous. You know enough. With 32 HP, I can actually I believe there's a good chance for me to live a Psychic for Mega Alakazam. So yeah, uh, bring in Fizz Death Pre Marina. This is for Haxorus. And Darmanitan. It is my best um, answer to both of those. Yeah. So that's that's really all I got to say about that. <laughs> um, Scald, Moonblast, Rest, Sleep, Talk. Very standard set. Um, 20 speed DVs in case. In case he decides to run, like, it's it's just because I had, I was able to run 20 leftover EVs, and in case he decides to, speed creep, to like, run a really bulky Golurk and decides to speed creep me, because I think that is the only thing this thing can potentially outspeed. So, yeah. Um, next, Needle Queen. Um, very specific EV spread. Um, what this EV spread allows me to do is not get to a KO'd by a Lolan Muck. Um, after one curse, and, like, if he brings a Lolan Muck, and he decides to bring, like, a Max HP, Max Redef curse set, I three-hit KO with Earth Power, and he'll have to, like, spam click, he'll have to, like, spam recycle. And if I'm able to leech seed him with a Pokemon like Celesteela, which I am bringing a seeding Celesteela, Celesteel is the one Pokemon that I changed to move on. I changed it to Air Slash because Liam wanted a counter in case he decided to bring a bulky set up for Rizion. That that's legitimately it. So um, back to so back to Nino Queen. The investment is to ensure that I three hit KO um, a Lolan Muck always, even if he's max HP, max Spadef. Because I am not running Life Orb. I am running Pyapa Berry. Which even with Naive Nature. If he is not running Modest. I live a. I live a plus one Psychic. And can knock him out with Poison Jab. Into Sucker Bunch. Um, and the 20 plus EVs are to always are to run a little bit of speed creep for things like a Lolan Muck and oh that's probably why I ran a little bit of speed on Pre Marina too for a Lolan Muck. I forgot about that. And for Golurk and I outspeed 
Seismitoad and a No Speed Cool Fish. So, yeah. Um, Celesteela, Heavy Slime Flamethrower, Air Slash, Leech Seed. I kind of wanted to run Protect on this. Uh, mostly Spadef. Mostly, uh, mostly Spadef. A little bit of attack, a little bit of special attack. Just to make the Flamethrower and Heavy Slam rules more in my favor. On Pokemon like Haxorus, if he's deciding to run a little bit of HP, and Skarmor, if he's deciding to run a little bit of Spadef, I do not want to have to. If he's running like a mixed defensive Skarmory to avoid a 2 KO from Flamethrower, I don't want to have to rely on a burn to beat it 1v1. And realistically, Celesteela can just sit in on Skarmory, because, like I said, I am fully expecting him to bring a counter Skarmory. So if he brings a counter Skarmory, I can scout for it by going Celesteela, and I can just recover up any damage that I may have taken in the match on Skarmory. Basically, Skarmory is a health pack for me. <laughs> if he doesn't have Whirlwind, it's really a health pack for me. And if he decides to spike stack me, I have Rona Mo. Um, Lace Storm, Bolt Switch, Defog, Pain Split. Max, max HP, Max Medef. I live two modest psychics from Mega Alakazam. Think about that. I love two modest psychics from Mega Alakazam. That's also that's also why I'm running mostly Spadef on Celesteela for Mega Alakazam, and I take like nothing from a th Thunderbolt from Thunderous. I take like sixty four to seventy six. Like so, I can live after rocks if he's max special attack Life Orb. Actually, no, Special Attack Life Orb does around, like, 85%. I was calculating Expert Belt. Because, realistically, he could run three items. A Z-Crystal, Life Orb, Expert Belt. I'm expecting either one of those three items. So, I can live that. I can live any two moves from Thunderous that aren't Sludge Wave. I live two HP Ices from Thunderous, and I can bring... Um, Rotom Mo in on Skarmory as well. Like, Skarmory, if he brings it, like, it's one of the few Mons that, like, he can, he can, like, use as a pivot to Zygarde. If he is bringing, like, the Shookaberry counter set, and, like, he, it is one of the few Pokemon that can, on his team, beat things like Tyranitar. Especially if he doesn't bring Verizion. So... I want two things on my team that take advantage of his bulk really easily. And if he goes Mega Alakazam, I can Volt Switch out into a healthy Mega Kangaskhan or into a... or into my Celesteela. Um, if I'm in on Thunderous, I can Volt Switch out... <laughs> I can Volt Switch out into Zygarde. And just Molly Wop him. So yeah, that's the team. Um, bit of a weakness to a Dragon Dance Haxorus, I will admit. That, that's realistically about it. And if Zygarde goes down, I'm in a lot of trouble. But as Zygarde is mostly a revenge killer slash endgame cleaner, I'm not going to leave it in to get Mollywopped. So yeah, like Zygarde is really what holds this team together. And if Zygarde goes down, I might just lose the game. So... Um, it's all about conserving that. Let's get, let's get, let's get to the battle. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, here is the battle. I, um, you can see in the chat there was a bit of a discussion about Mega Beatrill, but I checked the rules. Apparently... No matter what happens, if you make finals, the both the winner and the runner-up get, like, a certain amount of points. And in order to make Mega Beedrill, I only need two points. So, if I win this game, I think I'm guaranteed Mega Beedrill. I think Narth would need to... Um, not Narth. Nader would need to... Sorry, I, I, I do get their names mixed up sometimes. Sorry, North. You're still my best bud, though. <laughs> Nader is a 
Nader, I think, would need to win finals in order to promote. So, but either way, I believe if I win, I make Mega Beedrill, which I have been denied saying this entire time, but that does add a little bit of stakes to this matchup. And I really, really did want to win this game. So I was hoping the mind games would work. Last time, he brought this team, except instead of Alakazam and Haxorus, he brought Darmanitan and Seismitoad. Haxorus and Alakazam, I think, work a lot better on this team, because Haxorus is a legit threat to my team. Uh, Muck, Muck, uh, Max Attack, Max Spadef. That's what he brought last time. I'm assuming that's what he's going to bring this time. Salt Vest. Um, if it's Curse, it could be an issue, but I did EV Nino Queen to be able to beat a Curse Muck. He would legitimately need to spam Recycle. He would never not be taking so much damage. And if I get Leech Seed off, he will be losing HP. So, yeah. Virizion, again, mo I'm assuming mostly came for Tyranitar, because he can't not prep for Tyranitar, because Tyranitar does beat a lot of his team, especially if I was Choppleberry. If I was Choppleberry, oh boy, that Alakazam was doing nothing. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Thunderous, expected. Like, very much so expected. I'm um, still not sure if it's a setup variant or if it's a Scarf variant, but we will see. Haxorus, definitely expecting a Dragon Dance Z Haxorus. I'm expecting that to be a Z-Move user, but I could be wrong. Because without Z-Moves, it is really hard for it to break through Celesteela. Uh, Mega Alakazam, it needed to come to be a Revenge Killer. And Skarmory, I, I'm not surprised by any of this team, except for no Florges or Seismitoad. Okay, like I said, I wasn't expecting Seismitoad. But the fact that he didn't bring Florges or Seismitoad means that Virizion is the only thing on his team that does not get to a KO'd by Thousand Arrows. Everything else either dies or gets to hit KO'd. Like, like Mega Alakazam dies. Skarmory dies to two. Dies to two upon switching. <laughs> Muck dies. Thunderous dies. Hax Haxorus dies to two. Like, that's great. I My Rotom Mo, I, I st like I said, I think this team was good because Nidoqueen can pretty much assuredly get up rocks on everything on his team. Like, nothing can Oko me. Except for, like, Life Orb Earthquake on Haxorus. Um, Rotom and Celesteela take advantage of Skarmory. And Celesteela can sit in on most of his team. Like, the right half of his team, Haxorus, Alakazam, Skarmory, all three walled by Celesteela. If I can get rid of the get rid of the Z-move on Haxorus, he can't 2-a-KO me, and I can 2-a-KO him. Um, Mega Alakazam... The only Alakazam I am concerned about is Modest Zap Cannon. And he needs to hit Zap Cannon for that to be a threat. <laughs> Legitimately, I thought about that for the longest time. He cannot 2-a-KO me with anything else. Modest Focus Blast, not doing the job. Uh, Pre-Marina. Pre-Marina's the most useless member. Like that and Kangaskhan. I mean, I, I would like to keep Kangaskhan... But if I need to sack anything, it would probably be Kangaskhan. Um, Priya Marina is also kind of useless because he didn't bring Darmanitan. But it does check Haxorus like I eat a plus one poison jab from a life orb Haxorus. I don't eat it well, but I do live. I do live and I can knock him out with Focus Blast. And I'm another Pokemon that takes advantage of Skarmory. <laughs> like realistically, Skarmory is only really not getting abused by Nidoqueen or Kang. <laughs> Everything else is to a KO again. So, yeah. Let's get to the battle. So, I'm going to lead off with Mega Kang, because like I said, it's a little less necessary in this game, I believe, but the Fake Out Sucker Punch is nice to have. I am just going to go for Fake Out, to, because I know he's going to go Skarmory. I just want to check to see what item he's running on this thing. So, I go for Fake Out, and it does nothing. He is Max Defense um, Leftovers. Now, here... I could go for Thunderbolt to try and get the 2 a KO on Skarmory. But I want to go Pearson first. I want to go into my Rotom Mo and click Defog. 
Now, I I should have clicked I should have clicked default, but I actually clicked Volt Switch, expecting him to go Muck, and I didn't want to give Muck a free knockoff. And because I do want to chip that down, but this does let me go into my Celesteela, which does allow me to just get off a heavy slam onto something. Thunderous is going to come in, and that's going to do 35%, meaning that is great damage off on Thunderous. It now, like, assured dies to a thousand arrows. And here's where I make a bit of a misplay. I go Rotom, and I defog on it. And here's where I realize, oh shit, he could have superpower. Like, he's gonna psychic me, it's gonna do nothing. He's gonna hit and power ice me. I'm gonna go for defog, and I realize, oh shit, he could have superpower. Now... I actually want to keep my Rotom Mo because I legitimately want to keep this around for um, Skarmory because I can genuinely pain split back up. Like if I get that thing in, this thing in on Skarmory, I can pain split and get my Rotom Mo back. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and go into my Kangaskhan and actually risk it as he does pull out the superpower, and my Kangaskhan is dead again. I was okay with Kangaskhan going down, but that does suck that I don't have the priority in the back. But I am genuinely not concerned about losing my Kangaskhan as long as I play the rest of this game good. Like, I won't lie, I haven't used Mega, Kang Mega Kangaskhan the best this season. Like, in most matches, it's either died or it hasn't hit the field. But, like, it's done what I've needed it to do this season. And in this season, like... And in this game, it's take a hit that nobody else wanted to, wanted to take. So I lose Mega Kangaskhan, but I genuinely think that's okay. Because this lets me go into, into Zygarde, and he's going to go into Virizion. And judging by this damage, he is not defensive Virizion. He is set up Virizion. Um, I'm going to go into Celesteela. It's the only thing that really wants to eat a close... Ah, oh, fuck, I reset. It's But like I said, I want Celesteela because it's the only thing that... That hits a that wants to take a close combat, and here I easily could have clicked um lead seed, but I clicked flamethrower um, because it's still gonna get damage on an incoming thunderous, and I do have still have Nido Queen as I switch in, but I am going to actually make the double into Nido Queen, expecting him to go into either uh, Muck or Thunderous. So, this lets me go into that, expecting him to expect me to go for Flamethrower. He stays in and goes for Knockoff, because he's not scared of my thing. I'm going to get 36% off, so he's going to go for Knockoff. I can live another one. This He's actually going to go Mega Alakazam as I click Poison Jab. I clicked Poison Jab, expecting him to go into um, <laughs> Thunderous. And based off that damage, he is max HP, otherwise he would have just died. Oh, I'm sure he was not expecting me to have attack investment. He almost died. And here, I am going to go for Sucker Punch. Uh, it was a misplay. Because he's going to click Recover. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Poison Jab once just to keep him semi-low. And expect him to either Recover or, um, or just Psychic this turn. I'm going to go into Celesteela. Because with Rocks up... Thunderous is not switching in anymore. Like, he gets one more switch into Thunderous. I'm going to click Heavy Slam. He's going to live on 2%. And I'm going to decide to snack off... My... Yeah, he... Yeah, like I said, Sheer Force Zap Cannon. But because of his set... Because he's Recover... Like, he needs to have Focus Blast. And he's definitely not running Focus Blast Zap Cannon. Like... Like... Because of the set, because of the max HP set, he's definitely not bringing Zap Cannon. <laughs> Even though Sheer Force Zap Cannon, like, that is one thing I was really, really fucking concerned about. But, luckily, it does not come to fruition. Like, if he's Sheer Force Zap Cannon, he just deserves the win. Like I said in my t builder, that was the only thing that pressured Celesteela, and the fact that he didn't bring it was excellent. So, I lived the close combat, and... I know it's predictable, but I am going to click Sucker Punch. I could have doubled into Rotom, expecting him to go Skarmory. But if he gets Rocks up, that's really not that big of an issue, in my opinion. So, he's going to set up Rocks as I go into um, Rotom. And I'm just expecting him to sack off Verizion, so I'm just going to click 
I'm just gonna click Volt Switch. And now, he's gonna go Mega Alakazam. Like, if he reveals Psychic, he's definitely Focus Blast. Like, because if he was if he was Sheer Force Zapkin, he would have clicked it last time. I'm gonna live it because of because I am Spadeferodum, and I'm going to be able to keep that as a sack, go into Celesteela, and click Heavy Slam once again. He's going to bait me, and they're going for Heavy Slam as he goes Skarmory. And I'm gonna click Flamethrower here. As he goes muck. Now, he let me chip down this muck to the point where it is useless. He is not going to keep it. I'm going to sack off my Rotom now. I have Rotom and Needle Queen as sacks now. So, I don't need, um, so I don't need this thing. Zygar gets to come in, and I just get to click Thousand Arrows. Something's gonna die. It's gonna be muck. <laughs> muck goes down. He's gonna go Skarmory. Like I said, I'm expecting him to go be counter. So I can go into so I can go into Celesteela and start getting health and start getting health back on this and start getting health back on my Celesteela. Or at least recover the rocks damage I just took. So get myself up to like 79%. As I am now going to click flamethrower. And that's going to and now he's gonna DD up. Um his, like, I was scared of him clicking Z. I was scared of him clicking Z, um, superpower right off the bat, or Z outrage right off the bat, because if he chunked my Celesteela, he could set himself up for an endgame with Mega Alakazam if he combined it up once. Because he's max HP, I actually don't knock him out with Heavy Slam if he's above 70%. Like, there's no chance of me knocking him out. Like, I think the roll is 56 69. So there is no chance of me knocking him out. So I am going to Heavy Slam to put this thing in range of Choice Bandit Extreme Speed, and then I'm going to sack off my Needle Queen to the Z-Move. Which does come out and turn to be all out pummeling, because that would have murdered my Celesteela. And I get to go into Zyard. He's going to save it and go Scar and go Skarmory. And here he is going to make the double. And he's going to go thunderous as I go pre marina. Realistically, as long as I went, as long as I switched, he got the better end of this. Now, the roll is 84 to 100 percent. I have around a 66 percent chance to live. It is a roll in my favor to get this live. If I live and thunderous goes down, Celesteela wins. Celesteela walls the rest of his team. There were two plays I was thinking of making. One is stay in and hope I get the roll in my favor. And because he's a 40%, he only gets to bring this thing in one more time. And if he gets the roll in his favor... If he gets the roll in my, in my favor, like if he gets the, the minimal chance to kill, then I get to go into Zygarde, click Thousand Arrows, claim a kill... Um, but if I but if I get the roll and I kill Thunderous, I win. Like, I, 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 I he's pretty much revealed on Zalakazam that he cannot kill um, Celesteela. So, yeah, I'm going to so, or I could switch hard into Zygarde, but that could be considered a throw because if he predicts that, if he goes for the amazing prediction and clicks Hidden Power Ice. I lose. Because if I lose Zygarde, I just lose to Thunderous. Right now. But, so, I'm going to go for the roll. And he crits me. So, it does not matter what, what would have happened. Unfortunately, that means he gets to keep this. That means he gets to keep this. Now, now the game comes down to this decision right here. Thunderous is at 40%, so he cannot ever switch that thing in again. He cannot ever switch that thing in again. Um, if I get in Celesteela here, 
I win. <laughs> because I get to spam Heavy Slam and Flamethrower and just alternate depending on... Like, if he tries to stall me out, like, like I click Heavy Slam, he goes... He goes Skarmory. I click Flamethrower, he goes Alakazam. I don't have to ever predict because I just click Heavy Slam, Flamethrower, Heavy Slam, Flamethrower. And until I knock one of them out, because eventually they're going to get so chipped down that they're going to need to go for a recovery move and then start losing health anyway. So, he's going to need to hope that I choke at that point. And if I kill any of his Pokemon, if I kill Skarmory or Mega Alakazam, I get a Beast Boost in Spadef, and there is no way he can kill me at that point. He would need to crit me or paralyze me. It would come down to him critting me again, or paralyzing me. Or getting the para full para. That is what it would come down to. So, um, but, if I click Thousand Arrows here, and he stays in and clicks Psychic, I actually have a good chance to live if he's not, if he's not Special Attack invested, which it turns out he wasn't. Um, because I could tell from the psychic damage on my Rotom that he was not that, like, it, like, just because Mega Alakazam's special attack is so high, it's hard to do calcs on a special attack because the rolls, like, very, like, don't fluctuate that much. So it was hard to tell if he was special attack invested or not, but after the game, he revealed that he wasn't. So I actually had a, a very, very good chance to live this. Like, you would need to get an absolute high roll to get this. But, if I go Celesteel and he goes Thundee, he wins. Or it then comes down to a 50-50 of do I hard switch back into Zygarde, or do I stay in expecting him to click Hidden Power Ice. So I'm going to go Celesteela. I would rather it come down to a 50-50 than to a roll, and he's going to recover. And I think that's GG. Like, he's going to go Skarmory. And like I said, he he can't play the Switch in games. I am now, because he didn't show Life Orb earlier, because he showed Z-Move on Haxorus, I could tell from the damage on Rotom, he is Expert Belt Thunderous. The roll on Expert Belt is 64 to 76. I am now officially out of range of a Thunderbolt from Thunderous. Um, and he can't ever bring it in. So... Yeah, that, that, that's game unless he hacks me. Or, or has Whirlwind on Skarm and went for it, like, right there. But, like, he didn't, and I'm going to get the burn of Flamethrower. Like, uh, like, I was, it was going to be a little bit of a ward of attrition there. But because, like, he had used Roosts at that point, like, at that at this point, he has, um, 13 Roosts left, and I had, like, he had 16 Roosts, and I had 9, and I had 24 Flamethrowers, so I was going to be able to stall him out of Roosts before he could stall me out of, uh, Flamethrowers, so, like, if he just wanted to continually spam Roost, which he does here... Eventually, I was going to get a burn anyway, and even if I never did, I would stall him out of Roost before. So, yeah. Um, I'm just going to spam Flamethrowers. He clicks Roost. And basically, what this is going to lead into is me getting a Spadef boost on my Celesteela. And again, he cannot beat me without a crit or a. without a crit or a para full para here. Like, he's going to do it, it does nothing, and I heavy slam, knock out Thunderous, he doesn't get the hacks. There is no way, unless he pulls out the Zap Cannon and gets the para full para right now. I win, I go for heavy slam, that is definitely range of, of Banded Zydog. And Celesteel is going to take this home, baby. I'm just going to spam Heavy Slam, squash that Mega Alakazam. Like, it's doing way too much damage. He can't recover it off. 
And he's going to focus blast. He's going to connect, and it does 21%, baby. That was definitely not special attack invested. That is game. Oh, that end game was so tense. It really did come down to whether or not he made the play in the Thunderous and then forced another 50-50. <laughs> like, if he clicked Psychic or Focus Blast, it would have at least made the roll in his favor. Like, I think his play at that point... I honestly think his play at that point was to stay in with Mega Alakazam and click Psychic to try and chip me down to the point where... uh to try and chip me down to the point where I was in range of Thunderous. But if I got the Spadef boost, then I wasn't in range of Thunderous. So, he would have needed to hit multiple Focus Blasts, but because he but because he clicked Recover, I didn't feel the need to click Leech Seed or any of those moves in case he decided to go hard Thunderous on a Leech Seed, like something crazy like that. I never had to make the play. Um... I could just click whatever, and because he re clicked recover and then went into Skarmory, I was putting my- he, he let me get out of range of Thunderbolt, even if he somehow got in Thunderous anyway, so. That end game, like, once Celesteela got in, it walled the rest of his team. Like I said, the right half of his team was Celesteela food, and that's what it came down to. Oh boy, GG, Nader, that was great, and I think- Unless I'm completely wrong about the finals thing, I think we just made playoffs. Not playoffs. Well, we definitely made playoffs. I think we just made Mega Beedrill. I honestly think we made Mega Beedrill. I am so happy. <laughs> like, I, I thought I made Mega Beedrill after HIT, so, but I didn't. And I did an entire season of Beedrill. But I wasn't sad about it. I was okay with it. And I went 7-3 and three in Beedrill. One of my losses was to Hax. And the other two I legitimately got mollywopped in by Yost and Owen. Good games. And I went 7-3. and three. Um, I didn't make Mega Beedrill. I was actually the top person in Beedrill to not make Mega Beedrill. And I was off by 1.5 points. Because if I legitimately got two more differential points, I would have tied the person above me. And if I got three more, I would just straight be in Mega Beedrill. Like, I wouldn't need to make finals in order to be there. But if I read the rules page right... I get points just for being the runner-up, even if I don't win finals. Like, I'm gunning for the championship in finals. Know that. I'm gunning for the championship. <laughs> Whether I face Owen or Alex, I'm going for that championship. But even if the points I get, even if I get the sheet, got the sheet wrong, as long as I get any points, as long as I get two points... I'm in Beedrill. I'm in Mega Beedrill. And I worked for this. I worked hard for this. I won the HIT tournament undefeated. I went 7-3 and three in Beedrill and beat two very good teams to get to finals. Like, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying I think I earned my place in Mega Beedrill to at least try. To get a season to try. Even if I go 0-10 in Mega Beedrill, at least, at least I made it. At least I will always have that. I made it. I have been in, I have been with Hive since Season 1. Back when there were three divisions. Back when I was Kakuna for, for three seasons. Made playoffs two out of three of the seasons. Got hacks out of playoffs in the second one, but it was to Narth, and I legitimately lo like Narth, so I it didn't hurt as bad as it could have been. And that game had a lot of drama around it. It had a lot of people, like, I I'd rather not talk about it. But the fourth season, I did power rankings that, that unfortunately, I, I stopped doing. I, I have a bad history of doing things like that, but... 
I have been with the Hive for so long, and I legitimately think it has made me a better battler and a better person, like, interacting with these people. I... I am so proud to be here, and if I get to Mega Beedrill, I am going to attempt to make the most of my opportunity. Whether I go 0-10, 10-0, 5-5, whatever I go in Mega Beedrill, if I make it, I earned it, and I will just be happy. I am... I'm sorry if this sounds sappy. I'm just so ecstatic and so happy. Before this game, I... I... I was known as a playoff choker. I never made it to play... I never... Whenever I got to playoffs, I would always... Almost always lose in the first round. Um, this season of CUBA, lost in the first round. Um, the past two Hive times I made into playoffs, lost in the first round. In NBA, a league I had with my friends a long time ago, lost in the first round to a good buddy of mine, Jake. I had never won a playoff game. I was always good enough to make it to playoffs. I could just never win a game once I got there. But now, with the Mega Beedrill spot on the line, I won quarters, I won semis, and damn it, I'm going to try and win the finals. Whether it's a rematch versus Owen... Are taking on the up and comer Alex, who may I say, I am very impressed by Alex. He he's earned his spot in Mega Beedrill. He did a really good job this season. And Owen, one of the best players in the league, one of the, like in any of the leagues, not just Beedrill, in Me not just in Beedrill in Hive, one of the better league players I've seen. He molly watched me earlier this season, and I won a chance. To get revenge on him. I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of here before this gets too long. It probably already is too long, and you probably haven't sat through all this. I I I I love the hive. And if any of you guys are watching, if I make Mega B drill, and even if I don't, even if I am getting this wrong, thank you. Thank you for bringing me into your community and thank you for giving me this chance to evolve as a battler and to get to where I am today I am I am very grateful I, I know it's sappy it's just a game of Pokemon but it's the communities and the battlers that you play with the people that you play with the communities you make and the people you talk to that really makes the game what it is why we deal with hacks why we why we spend hours making the teams why we why we laugh when we when we win why we can do meme battles with our friends when they don't matter why we get super competitive why we calc rolls for five minutes before making a move it's it's what we do and we do it because we love the game and we love the people that we play with I'm, I'll see you guys. And thank you. For everything.